Assalamu alaikum. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Zubi Suleiman, and I'm a psychiatrist and work in Louisville, Kentucky. Today, I want to discuss about impact of COVID-19 on mental health. We all are going through a unique and a very different phase of our lives. We all are going through grief, tremendous amount of distress and trauma to some extent. हमारे लिए ये बहुत मुश्किल है कि हम इन चीजों को छोड़ दें जिनके हम हमेशा से आदि हैं। We took them for granted. It includes losing our routine, our traditional ways of conducting life at work or at home. We are dealing with loss of social connection, losing our celebrations. We are struggling with losing the joy of gatherings, hugs, handshakings, and eating together. Isolation and being alone is dreadful. We are uncertain that when we can have them back or our life will be back to normal. Currently, we are experiencing the physical impact of this pandemic due to COVID-19 virus. And same time, we have massive mental health pandemic brewing. And believe me, none of us are ready for it at this point. How COVID-19 has been affecting us. If we categorize the mental health impact in different groups, the one of the group is the people who already have existing mental health issues. They are experiencing exacerbation of their symptoms and their anxieties through the roof. The second group is the healthcare providers overall, which includes all physicians, nurses, and all the staff in all clinical and hospital settings. The most critical group is the one who are first responders and the first line healthcare providers. The general community, which includes our children, uh, our older parents, grandparents, the working and the non-working parents, and the people with a lot of medical issues. So literally we are talking about its impact from one side of the world to the another. And everyone is getting affected in different ways. Anxiety and fear of uncertainty is just overwhelming. So they lost their school routine, their teachers, their friends, extracurricular activities, the normal way of their exams, their graduations, their celebrations, and all the connections since the lockdown started. The people who are staying home or quarantine and social distancing, they are all isolated. The people who are working, and especially in the medical field, are overwhelmed and exhausted. They are fearful of taking the infection to their homes and social distancing with their own families and children. People have lost their jobs. They're dealing with financial crisis. Major events are all canceled. All celebrations, all weddings are canceled. Even the religious gatherings are canceled. People have lost their loved ones and the friends due to COVID-19. The families are unable to attend or even arrange the funeral for their loved ones. There's no closure. People are affected by overwhelming news and progress of COVID-19 and the death toll. We all are watching the slow, unstoppable destruction of everything we have held so dear to us. This is the biggest fear and a threat to our lives. We cannot afford to be ambivalent about the trauma it is inflicting on the medical community and the community at large. The destruction is so painfully visible in the loss of human life and the human ways of life. I would like to emphasize a little bit more on the COVID-19 impact on the mental health by using the example of first responders. 
there is a concern about psychological well-being of all physicians, nurses, and other staff who are involved directly in the acute COVID-19 outbreak. A significant proportion of healthcare workers treating the patients with the COVID-19 are experiencing symptoms of depression, anxiety, and insomnia. There was a survey conducted in China on about 1,257 healthcare providers in about 34 hospitals across the China. This cross-sectional survey took place between January 29 to February the 3rd. And this is the period when the total confirmed cases of COVID-19 were more than 10,000. In this survey, the symptoms were assessed by using different scales for anxiety, depression, insomnia, and the impact of the event. The outcome of this survey indicated that about 50% of the health care worker were experiencing symptoms of depression, 45% experiencing symptoms of anxiety, 34% were experiencing symptoms of insomnia, and about 72% reported psychological distress. I would say that not only the frontline healthcare provider, but everyone is at high risk of developing psychological impact from COVID-19 crisis, which may result in depression, anxiety, insomnia, the trauma and the stress-related disorder. While the peak of the COVID-19 epidemic remains to be seen, it will eventually subside, inshallah. However, the remainder of the toll that will likely linger is the consequences of the chronic stress, including the major depression and anxiety disorders. Just like the world has joined efforts to manage the COVID-19 infection, it will be critical not to neglect the mental health consequences of the fight against the epidemic. We all are grieving together. We all are in the same boat. This virus is not discriminating towards any one particular. It involved all of us. We must support each other. We all must be willing to brave through this tough time together. We must be ahead of the game before the mental health crisis boils over and explodes. We must address the mental health of our colleagues and community and start talking about it. It is important to acknowledge that it is normal to be feeling anxious and worried in the current situation. In the case of COVID-19 crisis, some amount of anxiety is actually helpful in reminding us to take safety precautions more seriously and protect ourselves. Be compassionate of our own anxiety and the anxiety of the others. Self-care is very important. Practice gratitude, which has positive effect on physical and emotional well-being. Being outside and connecting with the nature actually reduces the cortisol level, which is a stress hormone. Make a commitment that you will come up with three things daily that you are grateful for. Daily mini self check-ins are important. Take several deep breaths and check-ins on how you are feeling. It reduces the intensity of the emotions. Talk to your children and keep them well informed with positive, optimistic attitude. Make it a very positive learning experience for them. Practice good sleep hygiene. Do something productive. For example, cleaning, organizing things, praying, reading, exercise, walking, etc. Keep on schedule. Schedule help us feel more in control. Eat at regular meal times. Spend time away from your phone. Take breaks to switch activities. Do not stay on the news and the social media sites for a long amount of time. Control what is yours to control. 
Remind yourself of what you are doing to help stop this spread. You have to tell yourself every day, I am staying home. I am washing my hands. I'm keeping appropriate distance, which is about six feet from the other person. I'm not putting myself or others around me in danger. I don't have to spend time dwelling on what is not mine to control. Do not hesitate to get professional help for psychological distress. Call hotline numbers in case of crisis situation. Keep them handy. Use some helpful mental health apps you can easily find on your phone. And these apps are um, Breathe to Relax, CBT Eye Coach, which is really good for the sleep problems, Mindfulness, Mood Tools, Virtual Hope Box, etc. Because we all are going through this difficult time together, I strongly believe that we will emerge as more grateful, more mindful, and appreciative, and as a better human. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.